Neil Seth. I'm a professor of cognitive and computational neuroscience at the University of Sussex, and I'm also co-director of the Sackler Centre for Consciousness Science here. What I want to tell you today is how everything that you experience is a construction of fantasy generated by the brain. So look at this image now. What you probably see is just what looks like a random arrangement of black and white splotches. But there's something hidden within this random pattern. I wonder if you can see what it is. So there's actually a dog hidden in this image that you can see. And once you've seen the dog, then it's very difficult to unsee it. And what this shows is that when we visually interpret sensory data, we're bringing a lot to the table. The brain is actively bringing its concept of seeing a dog to the way you experience this image. Another example of this is this illusion here called the face vase illusion. Now for the same sensory data, you can either see this as two white faces looking at each other or as a single black vase. The fact that what you see is largely what you expect to see helps us understand what's been quite mysterious in brain science for a long time, which is that there are more connections coming from inside the centre of your brain out towards the eyes and the ears and the other senses than go in the other direction. So in just the same way that when we experience the external world, it's a construction of fantasy generated by the brain. The same applies to our experience of being a self, of having a body. This seems strange because what could be more basic, natural, than experiencing your own self and your own body? But this too is a construction on the fly generated by the brain. So let me give you a simple example of how this happens. This is called the rubber hand illusion and it's quite a famous example in neuroscience. And what's happening here is Dr. Suzuki has his real hand on one side of the cardboard partition where he can't see it and there's a fake hand on the other side and he's staring at the fake hand and what I'm now doing is I'm stroking both hands simultaneously with this paintbrush, with two paintbrushes, in time. So what Dr. Suzuki is now experiencing, he's looking at the fake hand and he's feeling touch while he's looking at this fake hand and over time, and we can ask him, he should begin to feel that this fake hand becomes part of his own body. So in our laboratory at Sussex University, we actually take these kinds of experiments a bit further and use virtual and augmented reality so that you can experience a virtual reality, computer-generated version of your hand so that you can experience having a hand much bigger and much smaller than your actual hand or a hand that's in a different position or that's a different skin colour. And in this way, we can really start to understand how the brain generates the experience of being and of having a particular body. And this is important because it starts to help us understand what happens when our body experience goes wrong. So some people, for example, who've had an arm amputated still feel the presence of this phantom limb. You can take these ideas even further, in fact try to understand how people have things like out-of-body experiences where they experience their body as completely gone or in a different position. So in an experiment done recently in Switzerland, some other neuroscientists managed to again use virtual reality to give people the experience of being outside their own bodies. So why does all this matter? Well, I think it matters for two reasons. The first is just understanding ourselves and our place in nature is one of the most significant problems we face in science now. We know that the Earth isn't at the centre of the universe, and we know through evolution we're related to all other living creatures. But exactly how we come to experience the world and experience ourselves is one of the greatest remaining frontiers in science. The other reason it's important is because these days many more people are suffering from brain-based diseases that affect their ability to live normal, healthy and happy lives. And by understanding how we experience ourselves in the world most of the time, we can start to better understand what happens when these things go wrong and so bring about a better life for us all.